Hello friends, welcome to our channel Gajpal A Learning. In this video we are going to study about the topic, factors affecting precipitation, and impurities in precipitation. So let's start the video. Factors affecting precipitation. Several factors can influence the process of precipitation in a chemical reaction. Understanding these factors is crucial for controlling and optimizing precipitation reactions in various applications. Here are the key factors that affect precipitation. First, solubility product, KSP. The solubility product constant, KSP, is an intrinsic property of a compound and represents the equilibrium constant for the dissolution of a solid compound into its constituent icons. Precipitation occurs when the product of ion concentrations exceeds the KSP value for a given compound. If the ion concentrations are below the KSP, no precipitation occurs. Second is, concentration of reactants. The concentrations of the icons or compounds involved in the precipitation reaction play a significant role. Increasing the concentration of the reactants, especially the icons that form the precipitate, can drive the reaction towards precipitation. Diluting the solution, on the other hand, can prevent or reduce precipitation. Third, temperature. Temperature can affect solubility. In many cases, increasing temperature can increase the solubility of a compound, making it less likely to precipitate. However, this relationship varies depending on the specific compound and its dissolution enthalpy. Some compounds become more soluble as temperature increases, while others become less soluble. Fourth, pH. The pH of a solution can influence the solubility of certain compounds. For example, some metal hydroxides are more soluble at higher pH values, so adjusting the pH can prevent their precipitation. Conversely, changing the pH to a more acidic condition can cause previously soluble compounds to precipitate. Fifth, presence of complexing agents. Complexing agents, such as ligands or chelating agents, can form stable complexes with metal icons, effectively reducing their concentration and preventing precipitation. This is commonly used in analytical chemistry to mask interfering icons. Sixth, stirring or agitation. Agitating the solution through stirring or other means can promote the mixing of reactants and improve the contact between the icons, which can enhance the precipitation process. It also helps in obtaining a homogeneous precipitate. Seventh, nucleation. Nucleation is the initial formation of solid particles in a solution. It can be influenced by factors such as the presence of foreign particles, the presence of impurities, or the availability of suitable surfaces for solid formation. Properly controlling nucleation can result in desired precipitate characteristics. 8. Rate of precipitation. The rate at which the reactants are mixed or the rate at which the reaction occurs can influence the size and characteristics of the precipitate. Slow precipitation may lead to the formation of larger, well-defined crystals, while rapid precipitation can result in smaller particles. Ninth, Ionic strength. The ionic strength of a solution, which is related to the total concentration of icons present, can affect the solubility of compounds. Higher ionic strength can reduce the activity coefficients of icons, potentially leading to lower. Tenth, Solubility and precipitation. Nature of the precipitating agent, the choice of precipitating agent or reagent can influence the characteristics of the precipitate. Different reagents may produce precipitates with varying sizes, morphologies, and purity. Understanding and controlling these factors is crucial for optimizing precipitation reactions for various purposes, from chemical synthesis to analytical chemistry and industrial processes. Properly manipulating these factors can ensure the desired outcome of a precipitation reaction. Next is, impurities in precipitates. Impurities in precipitates can arise from various sources and can have a significant impact on the purity and quality of the final product. Here are some common sources of impurities in precipitates. First, incomplete precipitation. Sometimes, the precipitation reaction may not be complete, leading to the presence of unreacted or partially reacted substances in the precipitate. This can occur if the reaction conditions are not optimized or if the reactants are not mixed thoroughly. Second, impurities in reagents. The reagents used in a precipitation reaction may contain impurities themselves. For example, chemicals used to form precipitates may have trace contaminants that can end up in the final product. Third, contaminated glassware. Laboratory glassware used in the precipitation process should be thoroughly cleaned and free from contaminants. 
residual chemicals or particulate matter in glassware can introduce impurities into the precipitate. Fourth, secondary reactions. Precipitates can sometimes undergo secondary reactions with impurities present in the solution, leading to the formation of additional compounds. This can happen when the pH or temperature of the solution changes during the process. Fifth, incomplete washing. After the precipitation and filtration steps, it is common practice to wash the precipitate with a suitable solvent to remove any soluble impurities. Inadequate washing can leave behind residual impurities in the precipitate. Sixth, adsorption of impurities. Some impurities may adsorb onto the surface of the precipitate particles, making them difficult to remove through standard washing procedures. Seventh, co-precipitation. Co-precipitation occurs when impurities are incorporated into the crystal lattice of the precipitate itself. This can happen if the impurities have similar chemical properties to the target compound and become trapped during the precipitation process. Eighth, airborne contaminants, dust, particles, or gases in the laboratory environment can sometimes settle into the reaction vessel or onto the precipitate, introducing impurities. Ninth, cross-contamination. Contamination can occur when the same equipment or utensils are used for multiple reactions without proper cleaning in between. This can transfer impurities from one experiment to another. Now to minimize the presence of impurities in precipitates, it is essential to follow good laboratory practices, including using high-purity reagents and chemicals, properly cleaning and rinsing glassware and equipment, ensuring thorough mixing and agitation during the precipitation process, Conducting thorough washing and filtration steps. Controlling reaction conditions such as pH, temperature, and reaction time. Employing proper techniques to prevent airborne contamination. Monitoring and analyzing the precipitate for impurities through techniques like spectroscopy or chromatography. Last is, by paying attention to these factors and maintaining stringent laboratory standards, it is possible to obtain precipitates with high purity and accuracy in various applications, including analytical chemistry, pharmaceuticals, and materials science. Thanks for watching this video. If our videos were helpful, then please kindly subscribe to channel and support the channel. Thank you.